I'm Melissa Montoya with HuffClub.com and I'm here with LA radio personality and DJ Soul Cool. Thank you very much, Melissa. It's great to be here with you guys. And my thanks to PuckClub.com. Makes a karaoke night good. There's three things that are very necessary for a great karaoke night. One is a lot of liquid courage from the bar. Another is people that know they have an inner performer. And the third is people that are there to appreciate that inner performer in them. Alright. What are some popular songs that are sung out of karaoke night? The most popular songs every week are always going to be Journey, Don't Stop Believing, Sweet Caroline, things like that, maybe Bohemian Rhapsody. If people like to mix it up though, maybe throw a little baby guy back in there to shake some booties, you know, keep it going, but it's got to be something everybody's going to know. Alright, do people normally request the more traditional songs or do they request the new trendy songs? Well, it depends. I mean, I try to stay current with the times, so I keep my files updated all the time. So I really can offer a mix of anything that you need, from modern to old school, and anything in between. Do people request more solos, group performances, or duets? I personally prefer to see a lot of group performances to involve as many people as possible, but mostly solo songs with a few duets for the couples that are out there, and then the drunk whole groups are going to be the real big group performances. What do you do if you get someone up there that just cannot sing a tune, they're just horrible? If we get someone that can't sing a tune, obviously I will personally overcompensate for them a little bit over here. I'm going to turn the track up a lot higher, turn the microphones down a lot more. So, you know, we just balance things out so they don't really know that they're that bad, but we can make sure everybody's still having a good time without losing their hearing. Good to know. On the other hand, what do you do if you, have you ever encountered a, a performer or a singer that's absolutely good that you followed up with or invited onto your show? Absolutely. Thank you for that question because when I'm not out DJing around LA, I also produce a radio show for 99.3 KCLA FM, which is called What's Really Good with Soul Cold, newest and truest of independent music. So if I encounter someone who's really that good, I can actually, you know, I'm in the unique position to offer them an opportunity to come on the radio on my show if they have their own original material. How do you handle a group of people, a large group of people that's drunk and demanding to be up next when there's a long list of people before them? There are several ways to get yourself right to the top of the list. I personally am very easily bribed. You know, shots of Jaeger mixed with a little monster will get you right up to the top of the list. Or, of course, some, you know, cash donations to my magic tip jar will get you right up there. What's the craziest thing that someone has done to get moved to the top of the list? The craziest thing, I mean, I see all kinds of things, and like I said, I get all kinds of bribes, be they cash, be they uh, liquid bribes, but the craziest thing recently I think I've seen was on a Cinco de Mayo at an undisclosed location by La Brea and Melrose, where a woman actually showed me her very surgically enhanced perfectly, I should say, surgically enhanced memories in order to be able to go right to the top of the line. And they were so stellar, actually, Melissa, that a certain other young man was sitting at his table and his girlfriend slapped the teeth right out of his mouth for staring so hard. Is your job just to put the songs in for people to sing, or is there a grander picture to it? Well, there is a lot more to it than just technical skills and knowing how to use the computer and knowing how to use the software, Melissa, because honestly, my job really, on the whole, is to know how to steer the party, as if the party, as if that night was some kind of ship and I was the captain of the ship. I really can steer the party in whichever direction I see fit. And I will get a lot of people that will come up and say, oh, I want to sing really bad, but they have no idea what to sing. I mean, should they be a group of girls that don't know what to sing? I got go-to songs right away. It might be, you know, I'm Too Sexy. It could be I Touch Myself. It could be Black Velvet. If a group of guys come up and they all want to sing a song, it's going to be Journey Don't Stop Believing or something like that. So, you know, I have to know what I can give people advice wise and where I can steer that party as my vessel as Captain Soul Cold. So you're working in a lively environment where it can get a bit crazy and loud and people are drinking and having a great time. But you're there for work. What is that like? Well, I mean, it's really a great thing for me because honestly, if you love what you do, you never really have to work a day in your life. But I do love what I do and it can get awfully crazy when I'm working in bars, which is the best scene to have a karaoke night because like I said, one of the key ingredients to a successful karaoke night is the liquid courage that the bar does provide to bring out your inner performer, but I actually prefer the nights that are a lot crazier because there's constant singers, everybody's ready to perform, everybody wants to be a star, and that's when it's really the most fun, and I'm having a great time as well. I'll have some drinks with the clientele, so I feel like I'm actually partying with them. They feel like they're a part of the show, and that's the best way to have it.